Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a rational equation as follows. We have 2x divided by 2x squared minus 5x plus 3 plus 13x divided by 2x squared plus x plus 3 and the sum is equal to 6. At this point you can just go ahead and pause the video and try this problem yourself first. Okay, so if you just approach this problem the usual way, and that's what makes this problem interesting, you're going to run into some difficulties. You're going to get a quartic equation, for example, if you just make a common denominator. You're going to get x to the fourth power, which we have to deal with. That's not going to be easy to solve. If you try to factor the denominator, so I can see that one of them is factorable and the other one is also factorable. Uh, that may or may not help a great deal because you might end up with a cubic equation. Anyways, at any rate, you're going to run into difficulties. So we're going to use a really cool approach here. So I just want to share this method with you. I don't think we've done any problem like this before. So hopefully this is the first time we're dealing uh, with, this uh, with this type of equation. And this method involves a really nice trick uh, we use in algebra. Okay, but first of all, I have to check something and that might give you a clue on the method that I'm going to be using. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if x equals zero is a solution of this equation initially, okay? So if I go ahead and replace x with zero on both sides and I'm going to tell you or you're going to find out why I'm doing this in a little bit. If I replace x with zero on the left hand side, I'm going to be getting zero on the right hand side, I have a six. So this shows that actually this is not true. So this means that x equals zero is not a solution, which is good because the approach that I'm going to be using uh, needs to be uh, checked. OK, so that's why for that purpose, we need to check it. So, OK. You probably guessed at this point, I think at least some of you uh, already know that I'm, what I'm going to do and I'll tell you what it is. OK, so what we're going to do now is if you notice that I do have 2x squared plus 3 at the bottom here, denominator, and the other denominator also contains that type, uh, same type of expression. Well, what about the x's? Well, they're both x's, so that's good. And to make matters better, we also have x's here. So that's good. That's a good thing to have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of this type of structure and divide both the numerators and denominators of each fraction by x. That's why I needed to check that. So let me go ahead and do that. If I divide the numerator by x, I'm going to be getting 2 from here. And at the bottom, I'm going to be getting 2x minus 5 plus 3 over x. And the other one is going to give me 13 divided by 2x plus 1 plus 3 over x. And obviously, the right-hand side is going to stay the same. Now, the good thing about this is that, and the reason why we do this is because now we get a really nice expression. We do get the 2x plus 3 over x twice. So I can go ahead and use that as my substitution. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace 2x plus 3 over x with another variable like u. As you know, I like u substitution. And it doesn't have to be an integral to use the u substitution. Now, it can be an algebra problem. OK, so we're going to use u substitution. If you do that, we're going to be getting 2 over u minus 5 plus 13 over u plus 1. And that's going to equal 6, which is nice because obviously this is a much simpler equation. First of all, we have no quadratic term. Even if you make a common denominator, the highest power we're going to get is going to be u to the second power which is easily solvable. You know that the quadratic formula is well known and it's actually the easiest formula if you don't count the linear because it, you know, it, I mean, you have a formula for ax plus b equals zero, but that's way too simple, right? The cubic, you know, gets complicated and then the quartic gets even more complicated and the quintic does not even exist. Isn't that sad? Like there's no formula for quintic and above. Anyways, that's another story. Let's go ahead and solve this problem. So I'm going to make a common denominator here. Let's go ahead and do that. Multiply the 2 by u plus 1. Multiply the 3 by u minus 5. Oopsies, that's a 13. And then obviously, when I'm going to get a denominator here, which is u minus 5 times u plus 1. I Actually, I think uh, I could probably just go ahead and um, multiply those out in the meantime. So we'll save a step maybe. u squared minus 4u minus 5. And that's going to equal 6. Obviously, what I need to do now is simplify the numerator 2u plus 2 
it's like 2u, you know, the birthday song, okay, plus 13u minus 65, and that is equal. Now, we're going to go ahead and distribute the 6, 6u squared minus 24u minus 30, okay? Now, we have u squared on the right-hand side, so let's go ahead and put everything on the right-hand side on the left-hand side, and everything on the left-hand side on the right-hand side, and simplify the right-hand side when it becomes, I mean, when the left-hand side, when it becomes the right-hand side. Anyways, I hope you got what I said. 6u squared minus 24u minus 30. I'm going to put that on the left. And the right-hand side, the new right-hand side, is going to be simplified as 15u minus 63. Then I'm going to put everything on the left-hand side because we write from left to right. Well, at least some of us do, right? Some languages you write from right to left. No offense. So I'm going to put everything on the left-hand side. 6u squared minus 24u minus 15. That's going to give me minus 39u. Negative 30 plus 63, that's going to make a positive 33. And obviously, we can divide everything by 3, which is a good thing to do. Let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to get a much nicer equation. Awesome. Now, what makes this equation even nicer is that not only is it quadratic, but it's also factorable. How do I know that? Well, if you look at the equation carefully, you know how they say, after careful inspection or quick inspection, shows you that u equals 1 is a solution. And why is that happening? Because if you look at the sum of the coefficients, what is the sum of the coefficients of a polynomial p of x? The sum of the coefficients is p of 1. So if you replace u with 1 here, then I could probably just call that p u, but anyways, it, you're going to get 0, right? If you replace u with 1, which means u minus 1 is a factor because u equals 1 is a solution. Well, the other factor is very easy to form because you have the first and last term, so you can just go ahead and the eraser is acting up to you happy birthday to you okay that's a to you minus 11 because i do need a constant term of positive 11 okay so that's equal to zero now the rest is cool don't you think well i do have my substitution formula here so let me go ahead and use that well u is going to equal one right so we from here we get that u is equal to one and that's going to be 2x plus 3 over x so let me go ahead and uh, multiply everything by x. This is going to give me x equals 2x squared plus 3. If I put everything on the same side, I'll get 2x squared minus x plus 3, unfortunately, equals 0. And why did I say unfortunately? Because this equation has no real solution. How do I know that? Well, I checked the discriminant real quick. b squared minus 4ac, unfortunately, is less than 0. So no real solutions from here. We don't get any real solutions. Too bad. But the other equation is going to give you real solutions for reals. So let's go ahead and check that one. 2u is equal to 11. This is going to give you u is equal to 11 halves. And as you know, u is 2x plus 3 over x. That was our substitution formula. Now let's go ahead and multiply everything by... I think uh, in this, at this point you want to get rid of the fraction. So I want to multiply everything by 2x. Let me go ahead and do this, like show my work. Uh, you know how teachers say, like show your work, show your work. Okay, so we'll, we'll show our work here. I'll multiply everything by 2x, and then something nice is going to happen. Okay, the world is going to be a better place. 11x, hopefully, equals 4x squared. I'm hoping that we're going to get over this virus situation, and everything will be better anytime soon. Okay. So let's put everything on the same side. 4x squared minus 11x plus 6 is equal to 0. And that's a really, really nice equation to solve because we can actually just go ahead and factor this as well. But let's do, use the quadratic formula anyways. Like, I mean, no big deal. We can always use it, right? I mean, if you don't want to deal with factoring, there is an x method. You can multiply 4 times 6. That's a 24. You put it on top, so on and so forth. There is a story behind it, which maybe I can cover in another video later. Anyways, I'll use the quadratic formula. Uh, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times 4 times 6. Okay. So hopefully, since I said that this equation is factorable, I should be getting something nice from here. And I do. 
if you subtract, uh, if you multiply 4 times 4 times 6, you get 96. 121 minus 96 is equal to 25, and the square root of 25 is equal to 5. So from here, you get x equals 11 plus 5 over 8, and x equals 11 minus 5 over 8. And what does that mean, or what is that supposed to mean? Well, it means that the, the first solution is 16 divided by 8, which is equal to 2. So that's my x1, and my x2 is going to be 3 over 8. So those are the equations. I'm sorry, it's not 3 over 8. It's 6 over 8. My bad. Let's go ahead and fix that. So it should be 6 over 8, which is equal to 3 over 4. So those are my solutions. Now, you may want to check, like plug it in, but it shouldn't be a problem because we already checked that x equals 0 is not a problem. We didn't square anything. There's no x on the right-hand side, so everything should look good. We have two solutions, and these are the real solutions to our equation. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.